Hi, welcome to AI Late to Class. Tonight I've got a video on Close Try On using the Change Close LoRa within Flux Context Multi Image. Uh, this is in Comfy UI, so if you haven't got that installed, you can look into my comments. I do have previous videos on that. Um, I'm going to go through more on the Flux Context Multi Image. Um, I think it's been overlooked by most, it's an incredible tool. Um, I'll also have a look into, if you go in here, you can see the uh, adding in two images and then putting some uh, prompt and having it come out with them together and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be characters, it can be any sort of objects. So I've got a workflow for that. I've got another workflow where you can put in two characters like I've done there or any sort of object. It doesn't have to be characters, but I do have a background there so that I can then have the output of the background and the two characters. And the final thing that I will go over is the Flux Context um, Toolbox. This is an incredible tool. So we have our image and then we make our first um, prompt. And we just, once we've done that, we can just connect another one up and we can keep going and going. We can break them off to go back if we didn't like the changes, basically like an undo. So that's an amazing product. And I guess if you're uh, wondering about do we have clothes on a white background like this? Maybe not. And thinking, oh, this isn't for me. No, I'm going to show you how to do that um, just in your normal flux context and grab an image and show you how to get that uh, the clothes removed and put on a white image. So yeah, there's a lot here if you're into image editing and you want to get this done in AI real fast, that's what we're going to do. So we've had these try-on clothes products for well over a year now. Um, I've tried in the past quite a few of these on Hugging Face. Uh, just to give you an example, I've just had a go at this one here. Uh, this is my original image, and this is the dress I've got on there, and it didn't quite do it. It's probably the best one I've seen on there. The image is still intact. Uh, the woman I mean is still intact, but the dress is not like the original there. And it was never kind of going to be right with these products because you need something like Flux Context or any of the editing tools that AI can sort of adjust the clothing to the person's body structure and that. So... It's good now that we do have something like this in uh, Flux Context. So on the workflow that I've got here, so same girl, uh, she's an AI image, um, and we just went on to the internet. So if I go into Google here, you go dress, click on images, and look for ones with white background. First, that's your easiest option. There's a few there. Right-click on them, save as, and that's how we get them into a workflow, both things are connected up. Go into Flux Context Image Scale and go to the VA encode. Um, I do have a GGUF no here if that's what you're using. I'm actually using the FP8 um, down here, scaled one. So, but that goes straight into the LoRa. So, if you're using that GGUF, just remember to grab the uh, noodle and go sh um, straight down and plug it into the LoRa down there. And because this is the LoRa that's doing all this, you can get change clothes without the LoRa. I've seen lots of people do good results, but however this LoRa is being trained, I've got the strength on full and then it's all about the prompt. Everything's about this prompt here. Um, it can change so much when you're doing these things, right? While keeping the person in the exact same position, scale and pose, change woman's dress to yellow pattern dress, zoom out a bit so that you can see the whole body. That made a massive difference with that zoom out stuff. Um, the dress is not quite the same in the straps there. It, as you can see, the pattern is identical. Um, she's uh, just like the picture, but this is the thing. It's all about how you get the prompt to change it because it seems to be following the dress style of the original one, but changing the pattern. So um, some things it works, it's, it's, you've got to have multiple goes at this. The Laura for this is on Savati AI. Uh, it's 327 megabytes, so it's not so big. 
I will have the download link in the comments um, going back and having a look at this. These are some of the images I got out. Uh, the photos for those are over here. So you can see um, these are pretty good likeness to the original clothing photos. Um, even on transparent background or white background, this has done an amazing result of these. So you're probably wondering, well, I don't always have things on the white background and that. Usually there's people wearing them, so what do I do there? So I've got a Comfy UI workflow for that. Just your normal context that I've already put up here before. So there's really no change to that workflow. I'll put it in there again, but... Um, it's not much there different. Just upload your image and just it's all down to your prompt again. Put the black sparkly juice only on a white background. Remove the woman and the background. That's all we needed to do. And that's what gave me that image over here, which has come out. Then upload the photo over here and press run. So looking at Flux Context multi image without changing clothes, just trying to get two objects together, it's, it's basically the same sort of stuff. So over here, we've got an image of a sort of Pixar style dog there and another dog with a baseball bat. I purposely made different colored backgrounds for them so that when we join the image, I could then choose in my prompt. Um, you can't see it much there, but of actually when I'm going down you've got is a light blue background um, and it's come out with a really good result there and so yeah this is just two images in in the flux context um, with these new edit windows is doing a really good job of this so it says place both cute 3d characters together in one scene where they are hugging removed the bat keep the face of the dogs as they were and the background is a light blue so it's important to talk about the face of them and making sure that you say to keep them the same otherwise it will just change it so now once we've seen that we can then move on to more than two images so I've got a different workflow for that because I found it was a bit difficult with that workflow. I've gone through a few different workflows here because they've got different wired up systems, right? So here's my uh, gnome there and then I've got got my deer there, um, sort of the wool felt type look. And then I just got a normal uh, rough looking city street and I've got place the gnome and the deer together with the city background with accurate scale and perspective match the lighting and shadows to the scene and subtle reflections on the ear cups to enhance realism hey you can also go to chat gpt or uh, google ai studio to get your prompts or deep sea any which one you think can give you good prompts for this sort of stuff this one i've put a sizing box in here um, so I've just made it a, a square there and the thing is you can change that and here is the result from that. I didn't probably want that forest in there but if I moved the prompt a bit more saying I don't want any of the forest then it would be more likely to get that gnome in deer just by themselves. So it's really all about the prompt but the fact that we can get our characters and staying true to as they were is really good. Um, saves a lot of stuff going into Photoshop and I mean that's hours of work saved. Last thing I want to talk about is this Flux Context Toolbox. This is really cool, very simple now. So you can just basically have your load image into your VAE encode and have your uh, load VA go straight in there and you can actually have just the, the one Flux Context Image Edit box and it's just your image out like that, it's so simple. You've got to update Comfy UI for all of the stuff, otherwise it won't show up. But you can see it's all got it in that box. You've got your scaled safe tensor in there. I've got my FP8 in there, and got my Clip L, the text encoder, and the AE safe tensor down the bottom. And put my prompt in there. Put a funny hat on the elephant, and there it is. Uh, this is a major thing, though. Make sure that your control of generate is fixed. 
and then we can click our next one on and this one i just said make the letters ai on the hat as you're seeing now let's have a look at our third one i said put some funny boots on the elephant now it made a mess of that last one so here's a good example we're just gonna try and do that again make them fit correctly right so um, it won't work as such there so I'm going to change that seed and then click run so that's the result of that the boots are on there they're a little bit better a uh, slight bit of bulge at the side there but with keep going you can get things right without having to wreck your original image you're just editing the new one so it's quite good um, we might just sort of delete all of these things here and um, go back to the start so we've got this guy with a hat with a speech bubble saying um, say late all right and we're gonna I'll push that seed one more forward so it won't do the same thing we'll run that yeah so that came out quite well so now what we, once we've got that we click on this up the top here this box here that brings us up a new box and we want to uh, change that speech bubble right so I'm going to copy that and go change our speech bubble and we want to say two and then we run that and it's just going to run that node so that's quite helpful so that one's coming out just as i wanted it so i'm going to do the next one so i'm going to copy this line here click on the edit toolbox again come over paste that in um and we're going to shift this over and we're going to say class and press run now so that's my final output exactly as i wanted it you can see how this would be good for so many things just being able to change and undo and go back and forth going back to our other workflow just looking what can we make changes to this later on probably get a control net in there somehow get some posing going on so we've got more control over that trying the place it here laura being able to actually put on items and put them in the photo where you want that would be quite good uh, i'll probably try and get a video out on that soon uh, there's a lot of things this could be used for i for me personally i'd try and use it if i'm making short movies and that obviously you're not going to have someone wearing the same costume throughout the movie they're going to be changing and this is the only way that i know of that's going to do a good job of that i mean you can use all sorts of things like ip adapter and stuff like that but you just haven't got control of your image so so well as far as the clothing and the type of clothing they're wearing this gives you so much more control and you know you can have them be in certain scenes and different things you can even change a piece of clothing and make it a little bit more dirtier for a certain subject if they're in a war zone or something like that uh, so yeah there's lots of things there that this could be used for i mean some people might just want it to you look up websites and see what certain clothes look like on them i don't know but it's a very useful product Hope you find this useful, uh, subscribe and see you in the next video.